So this is further details about the Valerie Flockstra at the Fraser Valley University, or University of the Fraser Valley incident. I did uh, one video deconstructing the audio from a meeting that she had with a professor and an administrator, and then I interviewed her and posted that a few days ago. Now, in the interview and in the audio, there is mention of a professor, Avneet Sivia. You have a strong faith, which is fabulous. It really is. I admire you that you have some such conviction. My worry at the same time is that your that conviction clouds how you can necessarily see other possibilities and ways. And I think that's knowing what I know about Abneet, I'm guessing that was her issue with you more than, than anything else. But again, I'm I'm putting words in her mouth by saying this, but this is just what I know about her. Avneet requested or demanded or charged Valerie with putting her Christian identity aside and putting her social justice identity out front. And I want to leave room for a generous interpretation of that. Perhaps what Avneet was trying to get Valerie to do was to understand that she's going to be interacting with people from a variety of different backgrounds, and that it's necessary to hold a space that is in between any given identity, that isn't putting one identity or one lens on the interaction at all times. And I understand that. And I think that Valerie has demonstrated the ability to do that. But looking further, into this professor and this particular report, we see that Avneet is putting her own identity front and center. And by her own identity means the social justice identity. And the social justice identity, again, is to aim for equity, which is to not only bring the marginalized up, but to bring the dominant group down. Her paper that I'm going to read from and this course description that Valerie was in, the, the course called Diversity in Teaching, uh, we see that the basic power dynamic, the basic conflict theory, the basic Marxist critique of overthrowing that which is dominant for the sake of the not dominant or the subservient or the uh, subdominant group, which is in effect not inclusive. Whether you want to justify it or not as necessary, it's still not inclusive. And I think that there is a case to be made that this goes against the Bachelor of Education handbook, the uh, statement of respect and inclusivity. And I'll read from that and then we'll get to the course description. Now, this is from the handbook of the year long course that Valerie took to get her teaching certificate. The Teacher Education Department, TED, at University of Fraser Valley is committed to creating a respectful learning and working environment where the fundamental principles of human rights as laid out in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms are upheld. The TED is committed to providing accessible, usable, and welcoming spaces for all people, regardless of their race, ethnicity, age, ability, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, religion, nationality, and or citizenship status. The teacher education department courses occur in learning environments that recognize and celebrate the diversity found within Canadian society. In keeping with the TRB standards of conduct and TED values and the BED program goals, it is expected that TC at UFV will also uphold this commitment to respect and inclusivity in coursework and field experiences and in their daily interactions with others. Please feel welcome to email your instructors with your name and pronoun and how you would like these to be used. I would like you to use my name when you're speaking to me. All right, so this is from the course description for schooling in a diverse society which is the program where Valerie was put in a situation that she was uncomfortable with, but that she learned to deal with, where she needed to role play as a homosexual person in order to develop empathy for a student from a same-sex marriage. So learning outcomes. Upon successful completion of this course, candidates will be able to accurately reference the principles of social justice, analyze from a social justice perspective broadly and K through 12 specifically, 
critique issues related to cultural identity, immigration, multiculturalism, gender identity, indigenization, diversity, social justice, and inclusion. Engage in critical discourse about the hidden curriculum related to marginalization of individuals and groups based on sexism, racism, classism, and ableism. That one is pretty ripe. Engage in critical discourse, right? Not critical thinking, but critical discourse. So it's, it's referencing critical theory and applying critical theory to the hidden curriculum. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm not in this class, but that hidden curriculum eventually starts to become that whiteness question or that, that hierarchical, that implicit bias question, right? And learning to engage critically through the lens of critical theory with the imagined hidden curriculum, that which is under the surface. To continue, reflect on personally held values and beliefs about diversity, inclusion, and social justice. In any other program, I would want to give the benefit of the doubt to say reflecting on personal held values isn't about manipulating those values or changing and challenging those values, but to learn a deeper understanding of one's values. But I, I think that Valerie's situation proves that they aren't interested so much in fostering introspection as fostering a growing mindset, a specific mindset within the individuals that they are teaching. <laughs> Here we go. Analyze hegemonic practices, back to Marxism, and various issues that individual students may face in the school, the classroom, and in society from a social justice lens. Analyze legislation and policies that may impact their provision of supportive teaching and learning practices in relation to diversity issues. Design appropriate curricula for the subject area in consideration of diversity issues. So this is the first class you take at the university, too, in this program. This course is Number one, this is the first thing you take. So everything is founded on diversity and inclusion. And so I want to switch over to Avneet's paper, because this tells us a little bit more about Avneet, a little bit more about her experience, a little bit more about perhaps her prejudice and her intention behind this whole thing. Now, I, I do want to say that that I only know this story from Valerie's perspective. That needs to be put out there. I have not spoken with Nancy or Vandy or Avneet. I'm going on trusting and just extrapolating from the basis of one particular point of view. So my judgment of the entire situation is not the whole story. That being said, this is Avneet, and she was one of three people who wrote a paper called Teaching for Diversity in Teacher Education, Transformative Frameworks. This is interesting because this is one of those papers that is based on references to other papers, and the substance of this paper isn't data so much as autobiography. It's that auto-ethnicity stuff. So this is just somebody propounding their own point of view and putting it out there as a scholarly essay, which is basically what I'm doing, right? It's basically what I'm doing. Still, in the section Contextualization of Practice and Research in Urban-Rural Settings. Avneet, as a teacher educator in a distinctly rural teaching education program, which has as one of its guiding values social justice, footnote, social justice is one of five program values in the teaching education program included in this self-study. Faculty members define social justice as a value where educators must be open to and respectful of diversity and difference. Educators require the ability to see beyond their own ways of defining the world and to be advocates of social justice and the inclusive classroom. What if that is one way of viewing the world, though? That's the problem with cosmopolitanism. The cosmopolitanism. That's the problem with multiculturalism. It's attempting to make a culture that doesn't privilege any given culture, but you can't actually do that. So what you actually have to do is you still have to make a hierarchy there. You can't have a non-hierarchical culture. So what they do is try to flip the hierarchy over again and call it cosmopolitanism. And I'm going to reference the interview that I posted yesterday with Stephen Klaus, who says that the, the basic definition of cosmopolitanism is to be without a home, is to be somebody who doesn't have a tribe. 
And the, there's an inherent tension in that. I, I think it's a noble goal to be able to enter into any given tribe, but you still have to have a home. You're still going to end up defending something. You're still going to end up acting tribal. There's a part of you that is always going to be making meaning out of things in a tribal lens. And multiculturalism does that too by going against the dominant hegemonic forces. And this is explicit in, in Avnit's writing. These personal and professional stories relate to what Pinar calls the autobiographical curriculum, which states that subjects of schooling must be centered on the individuals who undergo them. This meant that my own life experiences and histories as a first-generation immigrant who consistently negotiates identity in the hyphen between Indian-born and Canadian-raised are essential to my understanding and teaching of social justice in a course within the program. The personal story of navigating identity in what Bob Baba refers to as the interstitial spaces of cultural plurality. Let's pause for a moment in there and let me say that again. The interstitial spaces of cultural plurality informs in a powerful way my teaching of this course. First, it affirms for me the importance of situating learning within an autobiographical curriculum where the life histories and negotiations students undergo become the curriculum. The question of who am I, both for myself and for the students, becomes central and integral to the education of prospective teachers. Second, navigating identity reinforces the importance of disrupting preconceived notions of identifying others by refocusing on self-identification as a critical shift in the way that a social justice view is cultivated. Basically, I'm going to completely try to uh, ruin her ideas by constraining them to actual meaning. Basically, what I think she's saying is that it is... Uh, it is her privilege to be able to challenge ideas that do not conform to her idea of what an identity is. The teacher should be the one who doesn't have an identity, but is rather the one who cultivates, recognizes, and uplifts the identity in other people. But because nobody is able to do that, it's always going to be reduced into looking for the problems to critique with your critical thinking theory and, and looking through that hidden curriculum and then writing the balance, writing the balance, writing the balance. And in the process of writing the balance, you end up not being inclusive anymore. You end up excluding things that don't fit into what you're trying to do, which is to smash the hegemony, right? Because it's, 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 it's impossible for us to live in a completely, entirely postmodern, hyper-complex frame of mind. There, there might be a few people able to do that, but they will probably suffer from hypersensitivity to a number of different stimuli, right? We, we have to focus through our own identity in order to, to actually make a connection to somebody who is different from us. And to, to enter into stripping somebody of their identity or critiquing it is a is a process fraught with tyranny, fraught with, and by that I mean fraught with manipulating other people who do not follow your path, who do not think in the way that you think. Getting mad at a student who says that she has a problem, acting out, being homosexual, and then thinks about it and says, oh, okay, I can do that. To continue with Avni's paper, my professional experience of transitioning from teacher to teacher educator gave me the opportunity to examine my own practice as a teacher and recognize that I had little opportunity to express my passion and vision for a socially just classroom. The biggest challenges were the need to fit in with the professional norms of practice and follow government, majority, mandated structures and curriculum. I had little opportunity or space in the professional landscape of schools and classrooms to examine social justice issues and raise questions about decisions that were made, yet I strove to include, recognize, and affirm the students I taught. Schools, structurally, also presented limitations to enacting a social justice pedagogy. Timed classes 
time as patriarchal, grade-specific grouping, category is patriarchal, ministry-mandated curriculum and assessment, and a neoconservative agenda around teacher effectiveness related to well-managed classrooms, non-controversial curricula, and providing knowledge to students were all indicators of this very unjust kind of system in which I was trying to find my socially just self. Basically, she doesn't like the structure that she benefits from. This is the other thing that I like to point out about these academics. They are benefiting tremendously from organization, from time, from grades, from the structures, from all the stuff that goes into creating the, the academy and making it run. And they bolster against that because it makes them feel uncomfortable or they have personal issues with the system. And so they use social justice to, in effect, hobble the system that they benefit from. But they only want to hobble it so far. They only want to hobble it for the next generation and for generations to come. They, they want to d destroy the connection to the tradition that brought us to where we are in, in the hopes of, you know, uh, in the hopes of probably being more socially just or for, uh, for all the different discriminations that, yes, discrimination does have negative re results. Absolutely. There, there, there is little tweaks to be made, but time and time again, the people who want to, you know, overthrow the system are the ones who are being the most discriminatory in action. And to finish up this section of hers, furthermore, in the context of the rural setting of this teacher education program, she really doesn't like that she's surrounded by a bunch of white rural Christians, of which Valerie Flockstra is probably the exemplar of. In the context of the rural setting of this teacher education program, these points provided effective prompts for raising questions about students' experiences in schools as members of dominant groups. And then in the section Microaggressions in Practice and Theory, Avneet writes, Egbo's text provided numerous opportunities to engage students in connecting personal stories with their development as future teachers. While the identity wheel and personal journey activities led to self-identification and reflection, it became apparent that these activities also indicated those whose identities were affirmed by a set of dominant cultural norms. One student presented her family as messed up and not fitting the two heterosexual heterosexual parent family constellation. This activity also revealed a majority Christian faith based population in the cohort. Within this dynamic, I was challenged to bring forward a criticality, a criticality to the dominant group's understanding of cultural difference. For many students, their experiences with marginalization were viewed through the lens of mission work where privileges could be shared with the communities they visited as part of their faith-based experiences. I noticed in many students a shift I termed I didn't realize where students confronted their own privileged view of the other, which was unknowingly seeping into their view of their present colleagues and future students. This is so Foucaultian. Foucaultian, this is so postmodern Derridaian. In a professional environment, in a secular environment, it's improper for the teacher to promulgate their Christian, uh, their Christian belief system. Not necessarily the Christian values, but the Christian belief system. And it's also the case that we can become a little bit more sensitive to people, a little bit more empathetic for other people, right? In interacting um, with our own assumptions and reflecting on our own assumptions, we are better able to connect to other people. But upon that, and I think that that's a value, I think that that's a very good value to have, to, to be wary of offending people. To be wary of it, but to also know that people will take advantage of your wariness, especially in this culture. But upon that, upon that basic human empathetic virtue, the social justice curriculum wants to affect change. It wants to go into and attack that which it perceives as uh, perpetuating this discrimination. The majority group is always perpetuating harm on the minority group in the conception. And so the majority group needs to be critically attacked or injected with criticality in order for it to not be so aggressive, not be so dominant. The thing is, is that I think it misperceives where the problems come from. The problems don't come from the group. The problems don't come from the dynamic. The problems come from everybody is in a situation of 
growing more human over time. And then there's just certain basic uh, ways of interacting with the world that open yourself up to being more communicative across difference. You don't need to attack difference. You don't need to attack the dominant group and leech away its difference in order to give members of that dominant group the ability to connect more with members of uh, other groups. You don't necessarily, you don't need to inject this Marxist sort of revolutionary social justice activism uh, agenda into the thing. I think actually it will backfire and you'll have people like me who basically probably agree that, you know, there is a socially just manner of setting up society, but at the same time, writing those disadvantages, writing those disparities doesn't necessarily involve um, being aggressive, being attacking, being passive aggressive. So to reiterate, I don't have the full story. I do not have the full story. And I'm not as smart as the smartest person in the room. And we're all living in a very, very big room right now. I just wanted to bring up a little bit more insight into the way that Valerie was treated. And also, while at the same time, also reserving space for, for more than just her perspective on things. Why are you on my keyboard? You have the whole house and you're on my keyboard. Jeez. Go eat some butter. <laughs>